Hello, welcome to my channel. I am Aylin, and on my channel I do product reviews, hair videos, and from here and there, I'm deciding to do a little commentary. So, today we're going to talk about Kenya Bears and why a lot of people are not really feeling him right now. So, I was on Twitter, scrolling through the trendings, and I seen the black trending. So, I'm like, okay, this could go two different ways. So, when I clicked on the trend, it was Kenya Bears, biracial people, and culture appropriating that was being discussed. So, I'm like, okay. So, Kenya Bears came out with a new show called Black AF. And many people, I won't say many people, most people was not feeling it. They were sick and tired of him. And it was just a whole lot, a whole lot of, you can spend hours on that topic. So, I don't know if it was as told by Kenya or if it was Amanda, but I remember someone talking about, you know, people from my parents' generation writing shows for millennials and Generation Z, and I also agree, Kenya Barris is like two years younger than my parents, so from what he came from, you know, growing up in the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s, I could kind of see why he has some of the views that he does and why he, to be honest, is probably stuck. So Kenya Barris is mostly known for his shows, Blackish, Grownish, Mixish, and his recent show Black AF that just came out on Netflix. To me, I enjoy Blackish. I really do enjoy Blackish. Like, cause you know you kind of get it. And I guess so. When I was watching these shows, I'm like, okay, I like these shows. I really enjoy these shows. I mostly watch Blackish and Grownish because Mixedish, I can't relate to it. I probably watch it for the nostalgia because I'm really into like 80s, 90s aesthetic. But I was like, I can't relate to it. I'm not biracial. This is not my show. Even when the show came out, I defended it. I'm like, if you can't relate to it, it's not for you. Look, luckily, whatever. So, many people were talking about just colorism and stereotypes. And I also do believe that he does play into the stereotypes as well. About dark-skinned people being scary or just being so aggressive. And then light-skinned people being soft and getting away with so much stuff. Even though, like, listen, I'm going to save that for the, ch for the channels that talk about colorism. So... I found out in the past that he did shows, one of them was my favorite show, which was Girlfriends, but he only did a couple of episodes. So he didn't really actually produce those shows. But like I was saying, I feel as though he does not get it. I feel as though Kenya Barris does not get it when it comes down to him making these shows and that he puts certain stuff into his shows just to get Twitter just to shut up. That's what it feels like. It's like he put, we were talking about grownish and how, you know, this is not, you know, this is not how college is. And it's like, you know, you're starting all these topics, but you're not finishing them. So it's like, you know what? I feel as though he did like, we're going to, we're not going to start them. And if we're going to start them, we're going to finish it. It's like, okay, cool. So everybody started talking about the characters and how there's a lack of diversity in the characters. Like, okay, throw in this one dark skinned girl just to have, just that token dark skinned girl. Alright, the token dark skin girl. Because the characters on the show were, were my skin color. Alright, they were my skin color. There was nobody, there was no girl that was darker than me. So, when people like, oh, he just doesn't get it, he just doesn't get it. And he's putting stuff to make Twitter shut up. And I feel as though that is true though. And also, these token characters does not, these token characters aren't doing nothing. Because a lot of token characters are in the background. They're better off just being background characters at this point. With the rest of the background characters. One thing I like about Insecure, which is produced by Issa Rae, and she's also in Black AF, she makes an appearance. And that's another thing I want to say, like, from what I've seen from Black AF, the only thing that's Black AF about it is the black creators that are on the show. And then, because, like, all the, the chains and the, oh, black people get money, and then they just start spending crazy, and it's like... Sir, no. So she has a diversity amongst her cast with all the different people who are on the show. Not only does she have diversity on the show, she has a diversity of black people. So you got black people who got good careers. You got black people who are married, have careers. You got the black, the black single woman who 
is okay with where she's at and she ain't really she's just trying to have fun and she's just trying to party then you got black people who are dealing with gentrification black people who are struggling black people who are struggling with their mental health you know black people and another thing like Issa Rae is a millennial let me set up for this one Issa Rae is a millennial so not only is this show geared towards older millennials it's also geared towards some of us younger adults some of us straight out of high school people and stuff she she gets it and you know just to take the focus on her since Kenya Barris is a man let me use a man as example Tyler Perry as much as people drag Tyler Perry like to be honest Tyler Perry could have put out Black AF and we would have dragged him for it but we still would have watched it and we still would have enjoyed it and he probably would have took taken some of our suggestions and actually made a change towards it so even with Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry has diversity amongst the black people. That's why Kenya Bears doesn't understand, like, there's more than one way to be black. And you have these shows where you're like, the characters are talking about black issues, they're talking about black this, black that. But it's like, no, because it's not consistent. It is not consistent. And then also, you have these, like I said, I'm going to leave the colorism to the other channels. But you have these biracial characters, they're talking about some, oh, people don't understand as oh I'm not black enough and it's like oh you're the closest thing to black that no like no 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 so it's like if you're gonna have shows about the black experience include all different types of black people if I see a show titled black AF I'm going to be expecting some black AF ish like if you have a show about like the show is just black ish 2.0. Blackish with a little bit more money. Blackish with a little bit more production. That's what I feel as though it is. Like, if you're gonna have a show called Black AF, include black people. Cause I mostly didn't hear much about Kenya, like, like I just found out what he looked like. And from interviews I've seen, he's very soft-spoken. He speaks very soft. Even in the preview of the show, cause he's featured in the show. He talks very, very soft. So he probably scared of dark-skinned people. Shit. But, <laughs> But he did put out a tweet, and it said that, oh, he said this. He said, oh, I don't have to fill no quota, no dark skin quota. So it's like, stop putting out these shows about blackness if you're not going to include all different type of black people. Because like I said, there's more than one way to be black, and there's more, way, more than one way to look black. So that's, that's what I feel though. It's a disconnect. Because when you bring up colorism, it's like, what are you talking about? When you, you bring up stereotypes, he's like, oh, what are you not saying? Like, he tried to use the stereotypes as a joke. And it's like, eh, that was hee hee ha ha back in the day. But now it's like, no, we don't, we're not laughing at it. It's tiring at this point. It is freaking tiring. The same thing over and over again. Yeah, we talk about Tyler Perry putting out stuff over and over and over again. But at least... We get variety in the characters. At least we see different type of characters. People that look like my cousin, aunties, uncles, um, Keisha from down the street. At least we get those type of characters. And it's like, if you're going to use the black aesthetic, make sure there's black people in there. And then not just black people as background characters. Please let them talk. Like, let these characters talk if you're going to do that. But if you're, if you're not going to express the black experience, just don't, just don't include that at all. Like, take out the black take out the mixed, take out the grown, take out the black AF, and just let's title the show something else and have the show be something else. That's what I feel as though it should be. And it's like, and I understand that this is his art, and, you know, people are sensitive about their art, you know. I understand it. To me, I do a little bit of writing. I do photography. I'm just starting getting into painting, and I'm going to start doing redesigning clothes. So when you do, when you put your time into something, you're very sensitive about it. And, you know, you want people to enjoy it. And then when somebody crit critique it, well, how about you use that word right? But if somebody, you know, is talking about it, you're like, no, you're just trying to tear, tear me down. Like... <laughs> Using that same old, oh, you're just trying to tear people down, and this is why we don't support you. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. No, you can't use that as an excuse. You can't use that as an excuse. I feel as though, I want to say he's culture appropriating, but I feel as though, like, people who want to use the culture, who want to use black culture, are doing it through him. Like, when I see people, like, kind of parallel to Kenya when it comes down to what they put out and when people talk about it, I feel as though people who want to be a part of the culture are going through him and he's selling the culture to them. That's why people, I started seeing people say he's a sellout. 
That's from, listen, I'm just a messenger. So if you're selling the culture to these to these people who are not a part of the culture because they feel as though they don't want to get dragged for culture appropriating or whatnot, you're selling the culture. And then you want us to support it. How am I going to support something that I do not understand? I do not see people that look like me. I cannot relate. Now with his new show, his new show is just corny. It's freaking corny. And there's nothing wrong with being corny. There's corny black people out there. But it's just like, damn. Can something else be there? Ouch. But can something else be there? Can we get something besides corniness? Like, people are saying that the show is about wealthy black people and whatnot. And, like I said, there's certain parts that, you know, you're like, okay, cool. That's, you know, that's cool. But everything else just overpowers the serious talk. It's like, and he does this with grownish as well. When serious stuff start being talked about on grownish, they just stop. They just stop. They they leave it incomplete. And I feel as though he don't want to get too deep into it because he does not want to get canceled. I understand that. Not want to get canceled. Not wanting your back to stop. And me, I'm all about black actors, black creators getting their money and stuff. So, you know, I'm going to watch it to support the black creators, the black actors, all them stuff, you know. Because you don't want nobody out of a job. Period. But if you're not going to take your time when it comes to writing, if you're not going to go out there and actually have discussions, actually get a group of people that are in college, you know, not in college, or, you know, they're just going to complete a program and stuff, get them together, have them talk about what's going on and, you know, stuff that they experience. If you're not going to get people who don't feel black enough together so they can talk about what's in it, I understand it's, it's his life. It's supposed to be a reflection of his life, and he keeps... With each show, Kelsey keeps bringing up his wife, but his wife is out of here. So, it's like, he's better off being quiet at this point. Pay somebody to speak for you. Because if you put out stuff like, oh, I'm not trying to fill the dark skin quota, it's like, they about to drag you. And once you get dragged, you you ain't gonna know what, you, you're going not know why to respond in the future to stuff. Pay somebody to do your PR to speak for you. Um, leave black people alone if you're not going to take your time and really, because I remember I was watching a clip from the show and they had a whole ass PowerPoint and I'm like, damn, I finished school back in December. Why am I like, like I get, like, I understand what he's saying stuff about black father, you know, from what the topic was talking about, but it's like, sir, like, I feel it's just stuff is just thrown in there and stuff. And I mean, looking at his past work and stuff like a lot of stuff that he did was black af like he worked on the game and he worked um on girls trip and he worked on girlfriends my favorite show all the time listen i'm so mad that they ended that show so it's like i don't know it's like they like say it just need to take his time and at this point i think it's time for us to start focusing on other black creators and I understand that a lot of people are not mainstream. A lot of people do not have shows on ABC and VH1 and MTV. So, you know, it's got to start looking into the underground people. You know, people who have their series on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook and stuff. Because that's the closest you're going to get to people that are darker than me on there. Like, that's true. But thank you for watching. Um, if you like my commentary, you can check out my podcast, The Country Caribbean Podcast. You can find it wherever you get your podcast at. If you enjoy commentary and just podcasts, just that, that. On my podcast, I talk so deep into so much other stuff. Uh, being Caribbean American, being a, a millennial single mom, living in Atlanta, all that stuff. So you can go check that out and I will see you.